Good, good. Hi, good morning. Hello, hello, Sheila Ji. Hi, Vasanti. Hello, Namita Ji. Awesome. Wow. Hello. Hello, ma'am. Hello. We have 100 people in the Zoom already. Awesome. Good morning. Good morning, Elisha. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, good morning, ma'am. Good morning. How are you? It's actually it's actually good night for me. It's like 9:30 p.m. and I've dinner here. Yes. <laughs> yes, oh. of course. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, everyone is coming and joining, uh, Elisha. Okay, okay. No worries. I joined earlier. So yeah, yeah. Night. Thank you so much for uh, uh, coming and uh, saloon management for important for this uh, coronavirus. Thank you so much. I'm going to I'm going to help you as much possible, Vasanti. So any questions yes. that you have, write and ask. Okay, about you and yeah, sure. We are yeah we are exciting to uh, attending your class. <laughs> <laughs> I am I am nervous giving you class. You guys are so intelligent. <laughs> yeah, awesome. We have one twenty two people. Uh, hi, Varsha. Hello, Rina. We are actually requesting permission. Good morning, ma'am. Hello, hello. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. Good evening, also, because it's evening for me and morning for you. Good morning, ma'am. 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 I am just trying to admit people quickly. quickly. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. Good morning, ma'am. Hello, Shivani. Hello, Chila Ji. Awesome. So we have. Hello, ma'am. Good morning. Hello. Hi. Hello, ma'am. Good morning. Hi. We have what I'll do is I'll mute everyone so that we can start our class quickly. Okay. And uh, we will we will unmute everyone after the class. Okay. So I'm just going to good morning. Okay. I'm just admitting people and reducing the noise. It's 10.01 and people who know me know me that I am very, very punctual. So I would like to begin my session and uh, people are still coming and I have to admit them. Okay, just give me a moment. I will admit everyone. Okay, 161 people. Wow. Awesome. You guys are rock stars. Okay. So let me share my screen. Okay. A very good morning and welcome to Salon, Virus Free Salon Management. As we will be talking today a lot about salon management. So let me just get started and then we will take it up from there. Okay. So if you are a makeup artist, Massage therapist, colorist, expert, freelancer, hairstylist, professional in beauty, and YouTuber, podcaster, then this class is for you. Today's class is going to be in English. Our last class was in Hindi and English both. And today we are going to address salon, uh, virus free salon management in English only. Okay. So let's just. Go ahead with this one. So what I want you to do, I want you to write your name and the city that you're joining us from in the chat. So like your name, I'm Alicia and I am joining you from Seattle, US and that's me in the chat. Okay. So just everyone, just go ahead and introduce yourself and write your name and where you're joining us from. So Manju Verma, everyone. Anju Batra from Delhi, awesome. Tina from Mumbai, Varsha from Mumbai, Akansha from Delhi, Sheila from Jaipur, Minati from Orisha, awesome. Sarita from Delhi, Madurai, Bombay, Puja, awesome. Jabalpur, 
uh, we have Tamil Nadu, we have Chennai, we have Kolkata, we have Mumbai, we have North, South, East, West. Awesome. Lovely. Amazing. Awesome, guys. I'm Zarina from Odisha, from Bangalore. Look at this. All over India. And you guys are going to really rock. Amazing. So, give me a yes on the chat. Give me a yes on the chat if you never thought that you'll see this day. That you will never thought that suddenly the government will say that your salons are shut down and you are not able to work. Give, give me a yes when you're like shocked. What? I can't, I can't open my shop? I can't do this? What? Right? And give me a yes if you faced heavy losses during this lockdown. Right? And you are feeling nervous about opening up. Not only are you, are you, you want to open your salon, but you're like nervous. What to do? Like, I don't want to, I, I don't want to do anything wrong. And give me a yes if you want to reopen, but you want your customers' trust also. You just don't want to reopen just for reopening for the sake of it. You want to reopen and have your customers' faith. The people who trust you should have it, right? And give me a yes if you're committed to operate your salon virus-free, not only for yourself, but for your family and for your business, right? If this is you, then this class is for you right now. And why is this class important for you? This class is important for you right now because you know that you can follow infection control procedures, but you're not sure exactly what you should do or should not do. If, if just someone you could, if just somehow you could file, you could figure out what are my ways of infection control procedures and what to do, you will exactly do what you should be doing. And this class is important for you right now because you are trusted immensely by your clients and you want that faith going. Whatever the abundant faith that your clients have, you want that to go with you, right? And if your mind is running like this, you know, like this is called a hamster wheel. Hamster wheel is something where a, where, a, where a mind is just like working nonstop. And we have 10 different WhatsApp messages to, uh, telling us to do 10 different things. And, and from morning to night, our mind is like working. Should I buy this? Should I buy this inventory? Should I buy this PPG? Oh my God, this glove is so much. This bodysuit is so much. What am I supposed to do? How am I supposed to manage my staff? What am I doing? Oh my God, if your mind is, is working like a hamster wheel and if you are, if your mind is like bumping out of your brain, then this class is for you right now to figure out what's the new normal, how it's going to function and what is, what are our next steps, right? Now imagine, imagine for a moment that you figure out the new normal. You just know what to do, what not to do and you exactly know what could be sanitized or what could not be sanitized. And imagine this, once you reopen, not only your clients are happy that you reopened, but your clients are like complimenting you. It's like, congratulations, Lakshmiji, you did an amazing job of making your salon virus-free. I, I, I see the management of infection control and it's amazing. This is the kind of compliments you want when you reopen. Not only do you want the customer's faith back, this is what you want. And here is why you should believe me. So I'm a licensed instructor and cosmetologist in US. And here is why you should believe me. Not only do I train people for uh, advanced programs, I train professionals and then they go and take their state board exams. Now state board exams are like board exams. And uh, if you don't do anything well in terms of infection control, disinfection and sanitizing, you will not get your license in US. So trust me, I know what I'm doing, okay? And I do it all the time. I'm a jury and instructor for IBA. I'm an instructor cosmetologist in US. I'm an OMC bronze medalist in international styling, president for the Hair and Beauty Tour, artistic director for La Vivo, trainer for exclusive, and an, and an India skills expert 2015, 2016. So this is me. I do it all the time. And you are at the right place at the right time with the right kind of information. Now here is, 
I want you to know something. Why am I doing this session? People, will be, you would be thinking in your minds, I know, and everyone's like, why is she doing this session? Like, why? What's the inspiration? And why am I doing this for free, right? What am I selling here? What's the secret? Well, the secret is nothing. I'm not selling anything. FYI, okay? So why am I doing this? A, being human, coronavirus is a pandemic. The moment it starts, it's going to spread. It started from one city and it's now in the entire world. And it has, you know what it has done to the world? It has called the world to lockdown, right? So why am I doing this? Being human. Hello, human being. <laughs> okay. So why am I doing this? I also believe that great power comes with greater responsibilities. And as jury educator for All India Hair and Beauty Association and the president for the, for the Delhi chapter, I believe I should. I should be sharing and helping people as much as I can. Okay, so that's my agenda. So I know I have a lot to cover in this class. And trust me on one thing. You need pen and you need paper. Okay, so if you don't have that, I'm going to give you 30 seconds. If 30 seconds are too less, take 40 seconds. No more than that. Okay, okay. so grab pen and paper because you would want to write down your questions and the information that you will get in this session. Now, another thing, I know a lot of people are raising hands and you can, and everyone's muted so that we are able to conduct this session properly. But all the question and answers will be taken up in the end. So if you have any questions, don't think that Alicia is not going to answer me. Alicia is going to answer you. And trust me, even if it's midnight for me in my time zone, I'm going to help you. The only thing is, I would want you to answer, ask your questions towards the end. Because sometimes what happens is I'm going to answer most of your questions along the way. And by any chance, if I miss something, you can definitely ask me or I can recall you back. Okay. Awesome. I'm so excited. 270 people are ready to make their salons virus free. Go power. Yes. Okay. So this is my agenda for the class. We'll study all this infection, infection control procedures, new normal appointment management system, parking, reception, dispense room, infrastructure management, payment system, and all that. If you don't understand this, it's okay. We are going to take it slow one by one. Okay. Okay. Am I teaching you what I'm feeling like teaching you? No. I'm going to teach you what is recommended by the Georgia Board of Cosmetology. So Georgia State Board of Cosmetology came up with its rules. What should the salons and shops do when they reopen after the lockdown? So I am going to teach based on the State Board of Cosmetology. And I'm not, so I'm not going to tell you, so Alicia feels you should wear a mask, so you should wear a mask. Alicia feels you should wear a head cap, so you should wear a cap. Well, no, I'm not giving personal opinions here. I'm giving you state board rules and I'm giving you some recommendations that international community is following. And, and hey, everyone, it's virus. It won't, it won't really think. So am I the virus in India or am I the virus in US? Because US virus will behave differently. No, that's not going to happen. It's the same thing. So we all need to be on the same page here. Okay. Class expectations. Smile and don't stress. As you would have known, I'm, I'm not a stressor in life. It's going to be a fun class, trust me on that. If you don't get it, write your questions on paper and ask in the Q&A in the end. Be respectful towards each other, each other in the chat when you are asking questions. And remember, asking questions don't make you silly. It only makes you more intelligent. And I'm huge on having questions. It's time to study some chemistry and biology, so please take notes. Customize what I'm teaching for your salon and your city. Now I am teaching you what has been prescribed, but you can definitely customize it, make it unique for your salon, your situation, your city, but don't dilute it, okay? Do not unmute, your, unmute yourself because otherwise I feel it's a lot of noise and I've had in my previous classes where everyone's, everyone's speaking at the same time and I'm like, oh, I don't understand a thing here. So that's why. And remember in my Zoom settings, if everyone is disrespectful in chat, uh, trust me, if I remove someone in the Zoom class, they won't be able to rejoin the session. So be respectful towards each other and just have fun in this class. The idea is to help each other and have our salons virus-free. Okay, you ready? 
you ready? Give me a yes on the chat. If you're excited, if you like the agenda, and if you're like, yeah, go for it. Give me a yes. Okay. Yes, yes. Harshana says yes. Varsha, Somdada, yes, yes, yes. Okay. I like the yes. Okay. So the chat is what fuels me. Okay. You can see that. <laughs> okay. So let's study infection and infection. Oh, nice. Yes, yes. People are like, Muni is, yeah. Muni, I know you were asking for the link. I remember you. Okay. Infection and infection control procedures. Let's study that. This is the first thing that we will understand. Uh, infection. What causes infection? Oh, wow. We have so many people saying yes. Awesome. With Lakshmi. Oh, right. We have the president from Aiba, Tamil Nadu. Yay. Okay. So infection. What is infection? Infection is basically caused by microorganisms. And microorganisms are nothing, but they're tiny little animals which, are, which just enter our body and, they, and we don't have to eat them. They just ingest in our bodies. The, and that is pretty much microorganisms. Can we see microorganisms? Can we see all that? Well, if you take a scale, like a normal scale, the minimum measurement that we can take in a normal scale is 1 mm, right? And also, oh, I see a few people are raising hands. Please uh, write in chat if there is a... If there's, a, if there's something that you can't see on the screen, and if you have any specific questions, Q&A, Q&A in the end. Remember, we all learn from each other. So question and answer will be in the end. So please write your questions. They will be addressed towards the end, as you can see in my agenda, okay? So a normal frog egg is one mm, the minimum measurement on one scale. What is the size of a virus? It's the normal measurement on a scale divided by 1 million times, okay? So that's the size of virus. You cannot see them. Everyone who registered by 13th night would have received some YouTube videos in their email. Now, people, one thing is extremely important. You need to register your email with us so that we can send you all the information such as the YouTube links that we want you to see. Have I made this video? No. Am I trying to earn money from this video? No. Is he paying me? No. But is it an amazing video? Yes. Okay. Get my point. How do, how do germs spread? It's an extremely informative video and I would recommend. So Tina says, I've seen this video. Awesome. So people who have already registered 24 hours before the class would have seen this video if you have not seen this video then register with us in your e uh, register with us your email ids and we can send it across to you a must see video amazing video now let's get back to the class contamination method now what is this heavy word contamination my god ah, okay so contamination methods are basically when you spread the virus okay contamination means spreading the virus so there are two types of contamination methods, direct and indirect, okay? For example, let's take an example. This is our hand and this is full, full of germs. Ooh. For example, okay, this is not your hand, okay? This is uh, my hand, <laughs> just kidding. For example, if you have a hand and that's full of germs, then we will call this a contaminated hand, okay? So what is direct contamination? Direct contamination is when you are when this hand is going to touch someone else. So for example, if you're shaking hands with someone and your hands are contaminated or it has bacteria or virus, then that's, that's what we call is a direct contamination. Direct, going directly to that person. From one person to the another person going directly in form of handshakes is called direct contamination. Now what's an indirect contamination? This is what an indirect contamination looks like. For example, in picture number one, you have this, uh, this person who's opening the door with a knob, okay? And his or her hand is contaminated. Now, what happens after 20 minutes, someone else opens the door. So this is picture number two, and this is person number two. So after 20 minutes, person number two is coming and opening the door with the same knob. So what would have happened is, Person number one would have transferred some of the virus or some of the bacteria from their hand to the door. And now after 20 minutes, it's going from the door to person number two. So see how person number one and person number two never really shook hands, but the virus was transmitted nevertheless. 
that is what indirect contamination is so even though your clients or you will not directly will not directly interact and you'll have your mask and stuff like that you can still you can still be contaminated because of indirect contamination now let me tell you one thing when corona virus started uh thoda english use kar lijiye so um this class was in english i i'll okay i'll i'll try to do both english and hindi okay so in okay indirect contamination is jab hum वायरस एक हाथ से हमने डोर पे डाला एंड वो सेकंड पर्सन ने उसको डोर को फिर से एक्सेस कर लिया आफ्टर ट्वेंटी मिनट्स तो वो इनडायरेक्ट कंटेमिनेशन हो गया ओके एंड इन साउथ कोरिया व्हेन कोरोना वायरस स्टार्टेड वन पर्सन एक पर्सन की वजह से थर्टी टू हंड्रेड पीपल हैड कोरोना वायरस स्प्रेड इन दैम दैट वॉज अ रिसर्च दैट साउथ कोरिया डेड एंड यू नो वाई did that did that one person meet 3200 people no they went to marketplace they went to church and that virus quickly spread it so this was a research that happened so this virus is really very fast spreading and that's why you see all this lockdown happening okay and so what i'll do is i'll do this session in english because i see a lot of people from south india have joined this and uh, what we'll do is i have a video in hindi of the same session that i did on may 8 and i'll give you that link to that uh, session so you can listen to that because i promised them an english session so i'm going to do that okay awesome thank you for understanding a quick fact check on w uh, who world health organization on 28th of march 2020 released this fact corona virus is not airborne but the and but the droplets of corona virus is big and because it's big in within a meter it tends to fall flat on the ground that's something who is telling this is not elisha fact okay this is not us fact this is not international fact this is a fact like like haldi is yellow and sun is white or sun is yellow <laughs> that it's a fact right sun is yellow for everyone in the world same corona virus is not airborne and that's world health organization telling us right now now what happens when someone sneezes or coughs this is what happens the particles remain suspended in the air for about 1 meter okay for about 6 feet the particles remain suspended in the air and uh, and in about 6 feet time or 1 meter time the particles drop to the floor and this is what you don't want and that's why all the disinfection will come in i just want you to know this that this happens in corona virus okay so the virus that causes covid 19 is mainly transmitted through droplets and generates when an infected person coughs uh, coughs sneezes or speaks okay okay so how do we get rid of these points how do we get rid of these microorganisms or these germs there are three ways to do it sanitation disinfection and sterilization okay these are the three main ways that we get rid of microorganisms now a major difference between all three of them and this is super 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 important please write it down sanitation kills some germs sanitation kills some germs disinfection kills almost all the germs but not everything it doesn't kill spores and sterilization kills absolutely everything i repeat sanitation kills some germs disinfection kills almost most germs and sterilization kills everything even the spores spores are what i would call i i like to call spores as the un, the babies you know like how you're pregnant and you've not really delivered a baby but you're pregnant and there's a life inside you so that's kind of a spore stage for microorganisms they're not really in their full fledged forms but they are pretty much active okay please send the hindi hindi video in my email definitely i'll send the hindi version also in the email okay so what we do in salons this is what we do in salons sanitation and disinfection 
This is what is majorly done in salons. Sterilization is done when there is blood or body fluids. This is what doctors do. When they perform a surgery, this is what they do. Okay? Please do a little slow. Okay. I will, I'm going slow. Mm. I'm super excited. I had too much for dinner. So I'm going to go slow. What do we do in salons? I repeat. In salons, we do sanitation and disinfection. This is what we mostly do in salons. Okay. And sterilization we do when there is blood or body fluid. What do I mean by body fluid? Some anything coming out from your mouth, anything in terms of a limb, uh, a, 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 any kind of pus formation and it bursts out, anything like that is considered a body fluid. Your urine is a body fluid. So whenever there's blood or body fluids, that's when sterilization is a must do do. There are special blood control procedures when blood is involved because blood can be a carrier for a lot of germs. I know, uh, okay, so what is sterilization? Again, coming back to my point, the key point, two slides back. Sanitation kills some germs. Disinfection kills most of the germs. And sterilization kills all the germs. Sterilization is method of eradicating, removing germs. So someone asked me, what is sterilization? It is a way to remove germs. There are three ways to get rid of germs, be it bacteria, virus, fungi, anything. Sanitation, disinfection, and sterilization. Okay? So what do we do in salons? Sanitation and disinfection. And sterilization, we do when there's blood and body fluids. Awesome. So let's go at infection control procedures. What are our ways to sanitize and disinfect? Sometimes in salon, we will sanitize. Sometimes in salon, we will disinfect. Okay. So let's study what do we have to, uh, so it says differentiate between these three. Sudhir, when you're asking about differentiation, it is their potency to kill germs. For example, uh, when we have fever, right? Doctor gives us, let's have, uh, doctor says, have Dolo 350, have Dolo 450, and have Dolo 550. All of them have different strengths. So that different strength is what makes it different. Sanitizer kills germs, but it kills some. Disinfectant kills most germs. And there is a video that I sent, uh, which talked about the power of disinfectants by Sumi. And this, that also tells about all different kinds of disinfectants. So I'm sure some of you can see that video and understand. The procedures will come later on. Okay. Awesome. So rule number one. Okay. So someone's asking me procedures. Procedures are going to come on later on in the presentation. Okay. So rule number one for infection control procedure, the Georgia State Board of Cosmology says, that you have to wash your hands 20 seconds minimum, warm water, and you have to wash it with a good soap, antibacterial soap preferably, and it's required by all your employees when they enter the salon, after they eat anything, before every client, and after they touch common surface. Now, what do I mean by common surface? Common surface is, remember indirect contamination? When you touch a door and someone else touches that door, same thing. So that doorknob was a common surface. So similarly, you will see that after you touch common surfaces such as phones, computer, cash register, or credit card machines, that's when you want to wash your hands. And what I do is, so my way of washing hands in coronavirus is singing happy birthday to you. Because 20 seconds, like, I don't know if 20 seconds happens. So, I, so that's what I do. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Elisha. Happy birthday to you. So when I generally sing this properly, it's 20 seconds. So this is one fun way to teach yourself and your staff of uh, doing hand washing. Okay. And warm water is recommended so that you're removing all the grease. Second rule that comes with infection control procedure is having a hand sanitizer. 
Georgia State Board of Cosmology says that you need to provide hand sanitizers and tissue for employees and clients. So where should you have the hand sanitizer? Near the chairs, wherever, the, wherever, the pe wherever people are sitting, in waiting area, near the beds, manicure, pedicure stations, reception, restroom, waiting area, near the door. Everywhere you should have a hand sanitizer accessible. Rule number three is to have PPG for clients and professionals. PPG is uh, what, what Georgia Board of Cosmology says, personal protection gear. So PPG, personal protection gear. Some people also call it PPE, which is personal protection equipment. So whatever works for you. The idea is to protect yourself. Okay. And here are some eight important PPGs or uh, personal protection equipments that I would recommend. Now, we will see all of them one by one. So let me just read it out. Number one, mask, eye protection, apron, then your smocks or your body overall, neck strips, head protection, gloves, gowns, drapes, house coat, whatever you, whatever you give your clients, towels, bed sheets, and then shoe covers. If you didn't understand this, it's totally fine. Let's go one by one. Coronavirus is airborne for about six feet. It's not airborne in terms of, uh, is it going to be suspended in the air for about a day? No. But if a person is within six feet and that person has the virus, they can transfer that to you. This is one of the biggest challenges this virus has given us. We have to work with a mask for some time until the vaccination comes through. This, so preferably N95 mask, I know, I saw a few Facebook groups on, uh, in the Indian community and I saw people selling N95 masks for about 40, 50 bucks. So I think this is something that uh, all the professionals should invest in. So Georgia State Board of Cosmetology says that salon shop employees will be required to wear masks at all times. All the time when you are working, when your staff is working, you have to wear masks. If you are a freelancer, then those, the, then those rules apply for you equally because you are your own business owner, right? And if you're a freelancer, then you travel and you are more susceptible to virus, I would say. So you have to make even more effort to fight it out. Okay. So salons can consider providing masks to clients. It's your option. Okay, you can give them, you, you might not give them N95, you can give them normal surgical masks, which are a little cheaper. And clients should wear masks to the extent possible. So that's guideline number one. Guideline number two, so what I, I do, I use a face shield. You can have a 3D printer, anyone who does a 3D printer near your shop, when the lockdown opens, go to them and say that I want 3D print, printing done. You can have a face shield, 3D printed and you can disinfect it every day. Super easy, amazing. You can buy protective glasses also and they have adjustable bands. And you're like, Elisha, ah, I'm not a doctor. Why do I wear this, right? Like why, why you're making me look like I have to go to the moon? No, you don't really have to go to the moon. What you can do is you you want to protect your face. And why is that? We touch our face on an average 20 times in two hours. We don't even realize it, right? We don't touch our face, right? It's make, it has makeup on, you're looking so pretty, no. We don't even realize when we are doing this, 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 and we are just touching our face all the time. If you grease your hands with something black and maybe look in the mirror after two hours, you will see the black spots on your face. We tend to touch our face so much. We don't even realize it. So that's why protective face shield is a good thing. You are not disposing anything. You are not burdening Mother Earth. And you are able to protect yourself. And then you can even go, go ahead and make your own face shield using a 3D printer. Okay. So that's one thing that you can do is protect yourself and your eyes. Okay, I see some questions in the chat. I'm going to take the questions later on in the Q&A. Okay, next thing. Every client needs to have their own cape, which means that after every client, you are going to put this cape for laundry 
or you are going to and if you and some people i know some people like to use uh, disposable capes if that's you then go ahead but if you're using linen or if you're using fabric then after every client you are going to put that for laundry and every client gets a fresh cape so this is what the state board says and i'm just repeating that and you can even you can consider disposable capes and dispose of the cape cape after its use so that's what i just said okay awesome so the next thing is having a smock apron or body overall now if you want you can use this body overall i'm i'm seeing a couple of videos in several salons and people are wearing this you can do that totally no problem on you what i do is i promote smocks so what are smocks you know in india we use aprons so apron is something that we put it around the neck the front is secure but the but the back is really open right so what happens in a smock if it's a full sleeved coat kind of thing and it covers your front and your back and your arms you can even have this as a new uniform pattern so that's called smock and you can have that made in fabric and then you can keep doing that in laundry and then you would not need to invest in body overalls and body suits like this okay awesome and everyone please be respectful in the chat i see few messages so uh, please be respectful in the chat thank you so smocks employee should wear a clean smock between each client smocks should be laundered following the fabric recommendation depending on the fabric that you're using you have to put them uh, for laundry for every client and you can even use disposable smocks if you want totally on you my recommendation i am huge on laundry i'm huge on reusing things i'm huge on cutting cost so i am going to teach you what i do i'm going to teach you what i teach people so that they pass their state boards exams so this is me awesome i see questions or me questions in the end i will answer all your questions but in the end awesome next thing next strips you know in india we have this habit of using powder and then we have a powder brush while we are doing hair cut and then we take the powder from the brush put it on the neck for the client and then the next client comes and the same powder goes for the next client around their neck so that's called double dipping that is con completely unsanitary so this is what state board recommends using a neck strip if you have neck strip awesome amazing if you can buy you can totally buy it if you if you can't buy it, then what i like to suggest is take a tissue paper bifold it uh, make it like a triangle then tie the two ends together you you'll get a long piece put it around the neck and tie it up that's a neck strip okay right there boom you don't need to buy anything the idea is not to use not to use uh, your powder brushes for haircuts especially so use neck strips and then you're going to put capes on okay next thing is thank you great idea thank you so next thing is gloves gowns drapes house coats towels and bed sheets now based on your salon some of you use house robes some of you will use gowns some of you have disposable gowns some of you have fabric gowns some of you have uh, whatever you have for every client it needs to be unique if it's disposable you throw it off if it's reusable you put it for laundry for every client you're using a different glove and the towels and bed sheets change for every client okay because again we don't want indirect contamination remember i told you about direct contamination indirect contamination there was door there was a hand with germs remember all that that's why i told you because i was going to link that with this because if a client has virus in their hands and they came for a facial and they touched the bed sheets and then they just went up with their service and the and the next person comes in and they touch that bed sheet again then that bed sheet becomes a source of contamination so you don't want that so this is what the state board says that please change your gowns your drapes your house coats your towels and bed sheets for every client 
If you have fabric, put it for laundry. If you have disposable, then trash it away. Okay. Head protection. Now, some people are asking me, I have an amazing hair color. And this is where I, even I struggle. I love my hair and I love to style it up. But this is something that we have to do. Head protection. Because coronavirus is airborne in terms of six, uh, for about six feet, like one meter. And the droplets like to settle on a surface. Like we all read in the WHO article thing, right? So what happens is if it's, if it's suspended in the air, it'll, it'll get on anything. It'll get on the table. It'll get on your station. It'll get on head, shoulder, wherever, right? Because it's droplet. Now you're like, ah, I don't understand. Okay. Now, for example, we use perfumes, right? We, we sprinkle perfumes and, and we are like, wow, I love this lavender. And then, whenever, and then wherever we go for the entire day, that smell of lavender travels with us right that's the power of particles and when they go aerosol so similarly imagine if it's not perfume but virus it travels with you wherever you go for the whole day yep so you need to protect your head okay and uh, i recommend using this simple hair uh, head cap so that you, you protect yourself from uh, the droplet infection. Then the next thing that I recommend is non-skid shoe covers. Ah, why shoe covers? Okay, so I, I have, I've, uh, I've discussed this with so many people and that's why I exactly know why we should do use shoe covers. A, they should be non-skid because some shoe covers, when you, when you wear it on top of your shoes, you'll slip. You don't want that. You don't want accidents in your salon. So non-skid shoe covers, which will not slip on the surface. Okay. Now, why do we need to wear shoe covers? Why? Why? Okay. Because you cannot disinfect anything if it's, if it's dirty. We need to disinfect our floors when the lockdown opens. I see some people raising hand. Uh, please write your questions. I'll take your questions in the end. So shoe covers basically help to keep the floor clean. If the floor is clean so that the droplet contamination is reduced, remember, we have to clean first and disinfect later for it to be effective. If the floor is dirty, if the floor has a lot of soil, then even if you apply disinfectant on the floor, it will not work. It will not be effective. Yep. Now, for example, remember when we sometimes fall and then we have, uh, then we have a rash or something. What do we do? Do we put Dettol directly or do we first wash it? We first wash it, right? Because the idea is to first remove the dust, then apply the disinfectant so that the germs go away. Same thing, because it's a droplet contamination. The Virus particles will fall on the floor. And if the floor has dirt, you will not be able to disinfect the floor. You want the floor clean for you to disinfect the floor. So that's that. So a quick recap, rule number three, PPG for clients and for yourself, mask, eye protection, apron, smock, neck strips, head protection, gloves, gowns, drapes, House coat, towels and bedsheets, and then shoe covers, okay? Rule number four is extremely important. I don't think many people cover that, and that's called air exchange. So the, and you're like, Elijah, why are you telling us air exchange? We know, we have fans. What do you think of us? No, I'm not saying that. So we need fans, AC coolers, and exhaust fans in our salon. And why do we need that? Because it's the particle tends to infect the hair. So for a medical office examination, they are recommended to do at least six air changes per hour with two outside air exchanges. So what that basically means, long story short, cross ventilation. Boom. Simple. Make sure that you have tons of fans, ceiling fans, ACs, coolers, and exhaust fans in your salons so that all the air is not getting settled at one place and it's not contaminated and that you are able to have fresh air in your salon.
So air exchanges are something which is extremely important. And some people also feel fumes from disinfecting. So that's why you also want to have good air exchanges. Rule number five, we all have been hearing this. I don't need to say it once more. Contactless greeting, no handshakes, no hugs. Can you repeat rule number four? Yes, definitely, Richa. I'm going to repeat rule number four, air exchange. So basically what we are doing is all the ceiling fans, ACs, coolers, and exhaust fans will be used so that the air particles are exchanged. Even in a medical office examination room in hospitals, they are recommended to do six air exchanges per hour. And what that precisely means is just make sure that you have fresh air in your salon because the virus particles can be suspended in the air and then they will settle on your products, on your tools, on your shampoo bowls, on your makeup equipment, wherever. Okay. So that's why you want proper air circulation. And I know some of you would be like, oh my God, this is too boring. Ah, this is too much. Right. I know. I understand. But think of it this way. It only takes one, one person to have COVID-19 and the state will shut our salon down. And it, it only takes one or two people to make our city orange city or red city, right? We don't want that. So that's why I'm telling you as much that I know and I would love to share. So here's me. So rule number five, I hope that was clear. Contactless greeting, no handshake, no hugs. Rule number six, CD box system. This is my favorite. Okay. So what do I mean by CD box? Do I mean like we need to keep CDs for, uh, uh, for, for uh, uh, different musicians or there needs to be CD for Eminem and CD for Gulzar? No. When I say CD box system, I don't mean that. When I say CD, I mean C for clean and D for dirty. C for clean, D for dirty. At every station, two boxes. One is the clean box, one is a dirty box. Have I used very fancy boxes here? Do they cost $100? No, they're really cheap boxes. They're really nice plastic boxes with a lid on. Did I, did I go ahead and make fancy printers? No, you can write on a piece of paper, clean, put a tape, dirty, put a tape, easy peasy, lemon squeezy, right? This is what you want at every station. And when I mean every station, I mean wherever your hair stations are, makeup stations are, nail stations are, facial, spa, anywhere whatever you're doing wherever you're working you can have the clean implements in the clean box and in dirty implements in the dirty box now what do i mean by dirty implements by dirty i mean if you have used something even once it's dirty if you have used something even once it's dirty remember indirect contamination remember the doorknob remember how that one person with germs contacted the doorknob and the, and the doorknob had virus and then someone else contacted the virus because of the doorknob. Same thing. Whenever you use one thing on one person, you want to put that in the dirty implement. Now what happens when, when it goes for dirty implement? It goes for disinfection. So if you have multiple kits, you can do this. If you don't have multiple kits, if you have only one pair of scissors, which is totally fine, you would want to disinfect that after every use. So have this. And one important thing that, and this actually one of my clients really liked it. So that's what she said. Hey, Alicia, I really like it. I said, why did you like it so much? Because I'm so curious. She said, you started doing my makeup. You took all your brushes from the clean box. After my makeup was done. And as you were doing my makeup, you started putting things in the dirty box. It made her trust me. It, it basically instilled that faith on me. You want to gain your client's faith back. Remember, even I am not ordering from restaurant. I am cooking three times a day for seven days a week. Why? Because you are just scared. You are just scared from ordering from outside. What did they use in the kitchen? What are, what are they doing? Similarly, clients are scared to come to you. They are human. Hey. <laughs> so you want to do everything to have that faith back. So CD box system at every station works great to do that. Rule number seven is what I call the basic personal hygiene. 
And what I mean by that is employees should arrive at salon shop showered wearing clean clothes. And why do I say that? I mean, you're like, Elisha, we all take shower. Why am I being told this? Well, you're being told this because, okay, for example, when we, when we ferment, when we do fermentation and we use milk to make it, make it a curd, right? To make curd, we just need to put one to two teaspoons of curd inside a jar of milk, right? And that entire jar turns into curd by next morning. It only takes a few bacteria and then it multiplies. That's chemistry. Can I fight that? No. Can you fight that? No. And that's why we say have personal hygiene. Have no bacteria in your body so that if there is any infection, it quickly goes away. It doesn't multiply. And that is why this rule number seven comes to place. Okay. I see some questions again. Uh, we will take the questions in the end. Rule number eight, social distancing. Oh, I love my salon and I love working there. But this is not something that we can do in salons anymore. Unfortunately, social distancing is what will be available in the salon also. So if, if this is you, you want to occupy alternate chairs and start from there. Okay. You want to start small and then grow big. So social distancing in salons is something that could be done. Rule number nine, extremely important for every service that you provide. Now, I know some of you are freelancers. Some of you have your own salons. Some of you do makeup only. Some of you do makeup, hair, nails. Some of you are spa owners. After every service, you need to know what, how every implement is treated. So after use, each item should go either in the soil, linen or laundry or laundry or it needs to go in item to be disinfected or it needs to go in the trash. So after I'm doing every service, I need to know if, uh, if I'm putting this for laundry or am I disinfecting it or I'm putting it for trash. Extremely important. Please write it down. After use, each item, everything, everything that you use should either go in the soil, linen or laundry or it, or it should go in item to be disinfected or it should go in trash. These three categories and you have to make sure that for all the services you exactly know what is happening. Now I'm going to walk you through some services for example. For example, we are doing haircut. Okay, let's just go ahead and do a simple haircut. So in hair cutting, what, what do we use? This is what we typically use. We use a cutting cape. We use a neck strip, comb, some clippers, scissors. Then we use neck dusters sometimes, shower bottles, blow dry, round brush, some whole spray and products, and then some towel, right? This is what we generally use when we are doing a haircut, correct? What do we do? The next strip goes for trash. Cutting cape goes for laundry. Comb, clipper, scissors, they all go for disinfection. Then your neck duster has to go for trash. It cannot be disinfected and it cannot be laundered. So if you're using a neck duster, either you stop using it or you trash it. And if it's a shower bottle or a blow dry or a round brush, whole spray or products, then you have to disinfect it. For towels, you'll again put it for laundry. So see how I itemized everything? For every service that I'm doing, I am putting a category. Am I putting it for trash? Is it going for disinfection or is it going for laundry? Because it has to go in either of these three boxes. And you have to do this for every surface. I have done this for hair cutting. And you might use different tools. You have to have this chart for every service. For waxing, manicure, pedicure, spa. If you do uh, fancy facials. If you are into body treatments, body scrub, body wax. Whatever you do. You have to make a list of this. And say, am I putting it for trash? Am I disinfecting it? Am I going, doing a laundry of this? What am I doing? Right? So this is an example. 
neck dusters are unsanitary end of story can't do anything about it neck dusters cannot be sanitized it has been proven and time and again so i i either use a cotton bud a new cotton bud for every client and, or i just use neck strips for me neck strip works but if you want to use powder then i would say have a fresh cotton for every client and then throw that cotton away do not double dip so facial service let's talk about facial now obviously when you when we are doing a facial there's a bed so bed has a frame that wooden panel or a metal panel whatever that is then there'll be cushion good idea thank you oh nice i'm glad you guys are finding the information useful because i don't want to just give you a class for the sake of it you are here to learn something and i want you to have this valuable information and use it in your salon real time okay so for example if we are doing a facial then obviously we have a bed the bed has a frame then there is going to be cushion there is going to be bed sheet there are, there are going to be towels and then you will be using probably some bowls while doing facial you can use one time facial and you can use wooden spatulas you can also use metal spatulas suppose you are using single use headbands then client drapes and some silicone items this is an example okay this is an example you don't have to exactly do a facial like this i just took some example of what what do i use what does my salon use okay so what does lavio salon use we generally use this so that's why i have this you make it for your salon okay so what i make a list of this bed frame disinfect yes cushion the cushion generally has a covering of plastic or leather if that's the case yes i can disinfect if it's cloth or fabric no you don't want to do that you want to cover it okay bed sheets towels laundry laundry bowls if they are plastic or glass bowls disinfect yes one time facial use it one time do not do two facials from from single use facials or you can just give it to clients or trash it up wooden spatulas have to be trashed now this is one thing that i want to put 5 seconds focus on wooden spatulas have to be trashed there is no way you can disinfect anything made out of wood there is no way you can disinfect anything made out of wood because wood is porous wood is porous and what do i mean by porous porous is anything which holds water for example my clothes my clothes are porous so that's why they can't be disinfected they have to go for laundry now cardboard boxes cardboard boxes are also porous newspapers they are porous and that's why they can't be disinfected they have to be trashed your neck strips porous that's why trash so either you trash it up or you do laundry for porous things but they certainly cannot be disinfected so wooden spatulas trashed definitely because definitely we can't do laundry for wooden spatulas metal spatulas anything made out of metal can be disinfected then single use headbands are trashed client drapes like your gowns your uh, robes everything like that can be put for laundry and then your silicone items can be disinfected oh wonderful class thank you so much i love the compliments thank you okay like i said no double dipping please for example suppose this is my under eye gel in a facial service i use my cotton bud i put some product on my client's uh, under my client's eyes then i dip that same cotton bud again and then i'm using it on my client and then for the th next client second client i'm using that same i'm using that same dish and that same product so that's what i call double dipping i repeat double dipping is when you have some product in a bowl or a container you are taking some product from it applying on the applying it on the skin of the client then dipping that tool back into the product this is what we typically do in waxing this is what we typically do in um, a lot of services right so that's called double dipping even if it's for even if it's for the same client 
you are infecting your entire cream or your entire wax pot because of this double dip so either you throw it away or you give it to the product be it facial be it manicure pedicure makeup or waxing okay what you can do if you don't want to do double dipping is you can use disposable ice cream sticks so that you can use it once on the skin and then throw it that's one solution but hey i have a favorite way here you know i don't i don't like to burden mother earth i am not one of those people who would want to pile on the trash in your salons so i have a favorite way so that i am not double dipping and i am not doing any wastage if you want to if you want to know that and if you are tuned in so just give me a big yes on the chat so that i know that you are listening i need to know that you are listening and you're not like falling asleep falling asleep okay yes yes i see yes 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 awesome awesome let's go ahead let's go ahead so this is what i call my amazing method of not double dipping it's called two spatula and one bowl method so one spatula for example is for wax one spatula is for client and then i use one bowl in between to transfer so that the fallen wax gets transferred to it now what do i exactly mean by that take a look at this this is step number 1 step number 2 and step number 3 okay step number 1 from spatula number 1 take the wax step number 2 transfer that wax from one spatula to another in air now anything that falls will fall in the bowl okay so you're not really making your station or your floor dirty and then this second spatula is what we will use on the client so i'm not double dipping spatula number 1 goes into the wax then it get the wax gets transferred into spatula number 2 and then we apply the wax using spatula number 2 is it a little time consuming probably yes but am i spreading virus absolutely no okay and am i doing a lot of wastage absolutely no one spatula per client and one wax for the wax one spatula for the wax pot simple it's it's easy i'm not throwing 100000 uh, ice cream sticks i am not using cotton buds for everything i am not uh, piling on the pollution for mother earth simple transfer method the wax needs to be just a little hotter and trust me you all are so super smart and super intelligent i know that it will take you one day not even one day to know that okay and you know you can there are so many other methods but i like this method also because you are not doing any wastage now some people like to say that if a client is going for a full body wax you can use that entire jar of wax on one client what if my client comes for only underarm wax it's really little amount of wax right and then i'm going to what am i doing am i taking it separately in a in a container and if it's less then i'm then i'm going to add more heat it up and do all that stuff too much i don't like complicated stuff in life i'm not that person i'm simple give me less instructions give me effective instructions that's me okay yes you like amazing technology wow thank you yes so two spatula and one bowl method no double dipping okay and this is how you want your waxing stations to look like exactly like this clean you don't want your wax pots to look like this because clients would be super finicky when they are going to come they're going to look at everything everything so i want you to make sure that every corner of your salon is clean when you open up there there i'm sure with 6 weeks of lockdown and in some part there are 8 weeks of lockdown there would be a solid pile of dust so remove that and make sure that everything is nice and clean now let's take one example we took one example from the uh, facial service one example from the hair service let's take one example from the nail service for in, in a nail service we can do uh, we have chair we have hand cushion then there's a counter top there are metal tools pumic stone nail buffer then we have glass container plastic container then we have a foot spa then client will have a gown or a drape 
there will be some squeeze bottles and some towels on the net, right? So I have to break this thing, but let's go one by one. Chair, disinfected, yes. Hand cushion, disinfected, yes. Countertop, disinfect, yes. Metal tools can be disinfected. Pumic stone and nail buffer. Now, sorry to say that. There is no way anyone can guarantee that nail buffer and pumic stone can be disinfected. I have talked to the manufacturers of amazing pumic stone and nail buffer companies. None of them guarantee that it can be disinfected. None of them. Because once you've used a pumic stone, it has so many little, little spots that the germs and bacteria and dust can really get trapped. Okay. So there is no way that pumic stone and nail buffer can be reused. So you, either you can trash it or give it to the client. Glass container, disinfect, yes. Plastic container, disinfect, yes. Foot spa needs to be disinfected, yes. Client drapes will go for laundry. Squeeze bottles will be disinfected from the outside and towels and linens will go for laundry, right? You have to do this for every service that you offer, okay? Again, a quick reminder, pumic stone, nail buffer cannot be disinfected. End of story. You cannot disinfect these things because even they use a lot of sponges and wood and they are porous also. So that's why you can't clean them up and you can't disinfect. As I said, a key point to remember, porous material cannot be disinfected. Porous material can not. And I, and I like to remember porous when I just make, break it down. Porous. Ras in Hindi means uh, pani. Ras, right? So porous means anything which can hold water. Anything that can hold liquid is porous and porous materials cannot be disinfected end of story done now if you are doing makeup then you are disinfecting your brushes and your mixing palette or your mixing plate your eyeshadow and your foundation palettes are something that is exception you cannot trash it you cannot disinfect it and you cannot put it for laundry so we will talk about that in just a moment park this on the side let's put it at parking lot Cotton bud, trash, yes. Eyelash glue, if it's single time reusable, you just trash it, yes. Your glass container, your plastic container, your chairs will be disinfected. Your client drapes will be laundered. Then your squeeze bottles will be disinfected from outside and the linens and towels will again be laundered, okay? Now, what do I do with eyeshadow palettes? No double dipping in any of your palettes. Now, what do I mean by that? How am I supposed to do makeup now? You are going to take all your products on a mixing plate. Be it your concealer, your foundation, your lipstick, your anything that is liquid or in cream form, take it on a mixing plate. Do you have to go right now and buy this fancy mixing plate? No. Just have an amazing, small, cute plastic or glass plate and use that as a mixing plate for your makeup. Simple, okay? Extract the product that you need from the palette to the mixing plate. Now, what do we do in eyeshadows? Because eyeshadow, if I, if I try to extract through this metal spatula, then I'm going to break my eyeshadows, correct? And that's what a lot of makeup artists were like, what am I doing now? So what I did was I used cotton buds to take the product from the palette to the client's skin. And then I use my makeup brushes to smudge that on the skin. So the brushes only go on the skin. The brushes don't go from the palette to the skin. I am taking the product from the palette through my cotton buds, my Q-tips or my, uh, that the single piece which have cotton, cotton on the end and they are like, wooden or plastic in the center, so cotton buds. You can use that to take the product from the eyeshadow palette, put it, and then you can use your brush and then smudge. That's it. So you're not double dipping and that makes it easy, really easy, okay? Awesome. 
prefer using single use products this is the market for single use products you want to gain your clients faith back when i use single use products my clients love it i use and i open the facial kits right in front of client that way they know two thing it's completely hygienic it's sanitary and second they know that entire product is being used on them so that's why it's time to use single use uh, kits even for manicure pedicure go for single use kits super easy easy to maintain the inventory and it's uh, easy to handle and even for your hair spa and all for your services if you have single use shampoos conditioners if you have that great if you don't have uh, that's something that you can really think about because you don't want to do wastage in these times you you want to cut costs also because now you're investing in ppg and all that so you want to use only as much product as is required so single use kits really help you cut, cut the cost so that you know your staff or you are not over or under using it right awesome uh i shadow safety please so for the eye shadow thing akansha i said that take the product from the palette using a cotton bud put it on the eyes and then use the brushes to smudge it so that you're not using from the you're not putting the brush on the skin and on the palette together because then you're double dipping and you're infecting your entire palette that's not something you want to do so how do we disinfect i'm like elisha mm, what are you doing how do we disinfect you're you're talking about disinfection 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 then what do we do for disinfection yes we can definitely use powder eye shadow powder eye shadow great point harshita yes definitely so disinfection does not work on dirty items that's one key point that is a super important point that we need to understand if anything is dirty it will not disinfect remember how how we fall uh, how we used to fall down and then we used to have a rash or a wound the first thing the doctor does is is clean the second thing the doctor does is apply detol or sterilizer or whatever they want to apply right so disinfection does not work on dirty items so what can we do so quick question for you can this be disinfected as it is for example this was your after hair coloring this is what you have this is your bleach and this is your color and these are your bowls can this be disinfected as it is certainly not what do we need to do step number 1 is you have to remove hair product and dirt okay so if you are doing if you have a round brush then you have to remove hair from that round brush you have to remove product from your bowls and if you have makeup brushes you need to use water or your makeup removers to remove the product from your brushes step number 2 clean with soap warm water scrub and gloves now what is that what is that what is scrub okay so a you will clean everything with soap then you 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 are using warm water you you are really going to scrub it unless you scrub something it does not get disinfected now what do i mean by scrubbing remember how we have an amazing suppose you have an amazing dinner and you use you you had butter chicken or you had butter butter paneer whatever and then there was so much oil on that plate what do we tell what do we tell anyone who's washing a plate we tell them to really scrub it nicely so that there is no oil on the plate right because we know that unless you scrub it properly that oil particles stick on and those heavy particles don't move don't budge so just applying soap does not work no 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 so clean soap warm water scrub and then whenever you're doing this i like to use reusable gloves so i have like my uh, i i call them my pantry my pantry gloves and they are pretty reusable you don't have to throw them away they can be laundered and you just use them to clean everything so clean soap warm water scrub with some gloves and then you pat dry the items then step number 3 is disinfecting 
Now there are two ways to disinfect anything. Either you either you do the immersion method or you do the spray and wipe method. Now what do I mean by immersion method? Immersion method is when you are immersing your tool and equipment completely inside the disinfecting solution. That's immersion method, okay? Then spray and wipe method is when you are spraying or when you're putting a hand rub, then you are putting that, waiting for some time and then wiping it up. These are two methods to disinfect. Immersion method or spray and wipe method. There is absolutely no third way. So please write it down. Two ways to disinfect. Way number one, immerse. Immerse anything that you want to disinfect. And the second method is spray and wipe. Okay? Before going ahead, I have one question for all of you. Now that you're listening to me for a while, you should be able to answer this. If you are washing your hands, how many minutes you need to have this, for how many minutes you need to have the soap in your hands? Option A, less than a minute. Option B, one to two minutes. Option C, five minutes. Option D, 20 minutes. Okay, so let's see. So we have 20 seconds, 20 minutes. A, A, 20 seconds. 20 seconds, okay. Uh, option A, A. Okay, A, okay, nice. Less than a minute. Awesome, awesome, awesome. You guys are so smart. I love you guys. Awesome. So if you're washing your hands, you need less than a minute to remove that dirt particle. Option number A is absolutely correct. So whoever answered correctly, do this. Give a tap on your back. I like you. Okay. So, but long story short, disinfectant does not work like that. Disinfectant does not work in less than a minute. If I want to disinfect this in less than a minute, sorry, that's not happening. Okay. So step number three is you are going to check with the manufacturer exactly what is the contact time for the disinfection solution. Now, whoever was, uh, did sign up for the class 24 hours before, I sent you one video uh, telling you about some various disinfectants. Watch that video. It's amazing. And it uh, tells you about the different ingredients of disinfectant also. So you always have to check with your manufacturer the contact time. Contact time is the amount of time that disinfectant is in contact with the tool or equipment, okay? So it's, it can be two minutes or it can be 20 minutes and it can be anything in between. So check with the manufacturer. Can I tell you? No, I can't tell you. I'm not the manufacturer, right? So check with the manufacturer. What's the contact time? For how much time do I need to immerse it? Or for how much time does that spray or rub needs to sit before I wipe? Okay. So let's go and understand disinfection better. Some high spectrum disinfectants can take two minutes and some can take 20 minutes. Check with the manufacturer. How do I prepare a disinfection solution? So disinfection solution is I take some liquid. Remember we, okay, so remember we use Ruavza and we use uh, Badam Thandai and all that amazing thing in summer specifically. What do we do? Do we drink that entire bottle of Ruavza? No. We take a little Ruavza or we uh, take that little, little, uh, little Thandai and then we mix water to it and what we get is a disinfecting solution. I make this disinfecting solution one to two times a day, okay? I make this one to two times a day in my salon and that's it. Am I making it every time? No! You are only making it one to two times a day. And when do I know I have to make a disinfecting solution? Uh, so when I see foam on top of my solution, that is when I know that I have to make a new solution. Or when I see products, that is when I know and when the color really changes. So you want to make your disinfection solution for immersion method like this. How much water needs to be added? Good question. I would say contact manufacturer because in one of the products that I use, they tell you to apply 
one ml of disinfectant lotion, eight ml of water, and then you get the disinfectant solution. And in another another brand that I use, it says one is to sixteen. So one ml of the dis disinfectant solution and sixteen ml of water. So check with manufacturer how much water, how much contact time. Okay. So that is how you prepare your disinfectant solution. All the questions, I see good questions. I want you to keep those questions. I will answer your questions uh, before we end our sessions in Q&A, okay? So again, revision. It, what is the right method of disinfect, uh, immersion method? This is not how you want to immerse. Half your tools are outside and half are inside. That's not the correct way to do it. You want to completely submerge your tools in a disinfectant. Now, I know a lot of you who do haircuts who are like, or who do uh, makeup or who do nail tech, you're like, oh my God, my metal implements will corrode. They will have rust on them if I put them in disinfection solution. Trust me, disinfection uh, solutions are rust free. They have been tested in labs. They do not cause corrosion. They do not cause oxidation. Okay, I've been using it. My shears go into the disinfecting liquid every day. It's and it's working perfectly since two years. I just need to get my blade sharpened. That's it. Okay. Immersion method. Now, this is my sincere request. Whenever you are using disinfection liquid, use gloves and tongs. And why do you want to use that? Because this disinfection solution can be very hard. Now, our skin can, it, it can just itch your skin. Let's just say that. So please use gloves when you are approaching the disinfection solution, okay? Spray and wipe method. So when the surface is extremely large, remember our bed frame, our countertops, our chairs, what do we do with that? We can't really dip them into the disinfection liquid, right? So what do we do? Step number one, clean with soapy water and scrub it. If it's the countertop, when your salon reopens, it's, there's going to be a lot of mud and a lot of dirt. Number one, clean. So first have your gloves. That's step number one. Wear gloves. Clean with soap, soapy water and scrub. Then step number two is use a disinfectant spray or a disinfectant rub. Keep it for the contact time that the manufacturer tells you. And then towel dry or use a tissue paper or a napkin. A tissue paper or a napkin, trash. Towel dry. Then with a towel, you're going to put that towel for laundry. Okay? So that spray and wipe method is really important okay awesome so spray and wipe method for disinfection step number one we will spray it up step number two wait how much how much do i have to wait mm. check with the manufacturer i'm not the right person it can be two minutes it can be 10 minutes it can be 15 minutes it can be 20 minutes based on the lab results that's when you know and step number three wipe I am huge on spray and wipe. After every client, I wipe down my station. I wipe down my countertops. I wipe down my, uh, my uh, waiting area. I wipe down any place that my client probably touched on. And it's super easy. You spray it up, wait, and then wipe it. I use towels so that I can laundry them up. I do not, you can use towel napkins. You can use tissue papers totally on you. And always please wear gloves when you are dealing with that. Okay. Second, what happens to my clippers? You know, all your electronic equipments, what do you do with them? Again, spray. Spray and wipe method for your disinfections or your hand rubs are great to deal with your electronics. For all your restroom, for all your common places, spray and wipe method. And then step number four, once you have done the disinfection, what you're going to do is you're going to take your tools and implements out, rinse them with running water and then towel dry them. After it's dry, you store them in a clean box which is properly labeled and airtight. Remember my clean box in CD box system? C, C for clean. So that's when the C box comes in, right? Step number four, rinse with running water, towel dry and then store it. That's how you, that's how you know the disinfection is complete. So we did four steps to disinfect, okay? So let's recap. 
Step number one, remove hair, product, and dirt. Step number two, clean with soap, warm water, scrub, and gloves. Disinfect using the immersion method or the spray and wipe method. Then wait for two to 20 minutes. Rinse with running water, towel dry, and then store it. What if we want to sterilize? Hey, whoa. Well, if we want to sterilize, super easy. You can use UV sterilizer for your salons and spas. You can also use autoclave or, and autoclaves can look like this. It can look like a pressure cooker like here. It can look like a microwave oven like this. So you can use any of these implements. They are generally used for surgical equipments and doctors use it. So go ahead and use if you want to do. What are my steps? My step number one and step number two will remain same. Then instead of doing step number three, I will put them in autoclave or sterilizer. Easy peasy, the steps do not change. Okay. So this finishes my first agenda, which is the most important part of the class. Let's talk about the new normal, which is the appointment management system. The Georgia Statement of Cosmology says that have appointments only. Either you book online appointments or you do appointments by the phone, okay? For online appointments, you can use several softwares. You can even use your Google Calendar to set up appointments. And I am I'm trying to do some classes with uh, digital people so that you, so for some of you who don't know how to do online things and you want to learn how to make appointments online and how to use that thing, we are going to come up with some set of classes which can help you in that digitization, okay? And if you can also book appointments on the phone, that will be great. You want to disinfect the phone after each use if it's a common phone in the salon. Again, spray and wipe method. Then, really important, ask your clients these four questions before they come. You can use a Google Doc or you can ask them over the phone. Have you had cough? Have you had fever? Have you been around anyone exhibiting these symptoms within the past 14 days? Or are you living with anyone who is sick or quarantined? You have to ask each of these clients each of your clients these four questions and why do i say that because you don't want to infect some other client because of one infected client you don't want to infect yourself right so this is what the georgia state board of cosmetology says so these questions are not something that i am telling you to do these are state guidelines i also email my clients what i call my la vivo salon infection best control practices Pretty much you can do it. Whatever I'm teaching you in the class, you are making notes, right? Make an email out of it. When your client books an appointment with you, send them this email. Or if you don't want to send them an email, send them a WhatsApp. Make sure, uh, so what, what are you sending on WhatsApp? Your infection control practices, okay? So whatever you are doing to disinfect, what are, your, what are the PPGs that you're using? What are the things that you're doing in your salon to make your salon virus free? Tell them that. Your clients want to know what you're doing. They want to be with you in your success. They want to support you. So make sure that you're paging them so that they feel confident when they approach you. That's it. The second thing that we are going to talk about the new normal is parking system. Say yes to self-parking and no to valet parking. I see some amazing questions in the chat again. I'm going to tell the answers in the, in the end in my Q&A. Yes to self-parking and no to valet parking, okay? The third thing, reception system. Make sure, okay, so this is one thing I would, I would say invest. If you own a salon or if you are a freelancer and if you are by yourself, you are your single owner, member, employee, then you want to buy a touchless infrared thermometer. Every day, every day, all your employees, all your staff needs to have their temperature checked. Use this touchless infrared thermometer, okay? And do this for all your clients when they enter. Since it's touchless, amazing, it's infrared, you don't have to be in contact with them so that you will know if they have fever or not. What if your client is lying and they have fever? So now you will immediately know and then you can immediately turn down the service. You can say, hello ma'am or hello sir, can we book your appointment for some other time? 
just be calm casual and happy about it so have temperature checks so i see some questions again i'm going to take those questions in the q and a uh, okay so regular thermometer again let's just talk about regular thermometer you have to disinfect regular thermometer so much because it goes inside the mouth i would prefer touchless this is this is i know this is one time single use investment i think this is about 1500 to 2000 indian rupees if i'm not wrong maybe it's cheaper but it's something that you can you all can uh, invest in i feel second thing is in the reception there is always a door and clients will use the door handle you don't want indirect contamination so you are going to use the rub and wipe method after every touch disinfect the door handle have a hand sanitizer at the entrance the waiting area needs to be 6 feet apart preferably have plastic chairs okay because if you have cloth chairs it cannot be properly cleaned and disinfected okay so okay so it's 3500 to 4000 oh gosh it's expensive in india then mm. okay so here it's cheaper but okay so but that's again one time cost and you're going to use it on multiple people and then you are checking the temperature for all your clients every day so something that you all can think about it's it's totally on you the next thing is no magazine or magazine stands remember all these places where we places are, are amazing magazines they are the they are the point of contamination because everyone is going to approach them read the magazines and then you'll have to disinfect them and magazines are porous they hold water you can't really disinfect a magazine you have to just you have to just trash it up so no magazine and no magazine stands that's what the state board tells us okay so this is my salon everyone and we have a coffee machine right here unfortunately this coffee machine is going away because tea coffee will only be served on request because everyone touches that coffee machine everyone will uh, touch the coffee pods and the sugar and cream and everything you don't want that you don't you can't really clean all that so this is going away second thing again my salon okay second thing is retail shelf every day you are disinfecting with spray, with spray and wipe method or rub and wipe method and you want to probably keep one item uh, for every category of product that you have so that you are not disinfecting 150 products every day and you have to definitely uh, disinfect all your shelves every day okay so make sure that your your retail shelves are properly disinfected then what i like to do is give your clients ppg at check in now since you now since it's an appointment based system you really know if that client is here for a haircut or if they are for a hair spa or if they are for a body spa or if they are for a makeup or waxing service whatever they are for give them ppg based on that now a quick question for you answer in the chat which option would be preferable to give the client ppg option number a or option number b how would you give the clients your ppg option number a in these dispenser bags or option number b in these cardboard boxes what should be done okay so muskan says a a bhavya says a saji says a anusha a okay ritu says a awesome awesome you guys are super smart ashmita says a you guys you are rocking it you know that porous material cannot be disinfected cardboard boxes are porous and option a is correct yes mangati yes swati yes you guys are correct option a is absolutely correct like amitabh bachchan says in konmaria crore pati sai jawab okay so reception system is that then what is the new normal for my dispense or my break room or my kitchen or my pantry so state board basically says that all your sinks need to have a bacterial soap you need to have sanitizers you you can't really have any congregation or collection of people in kitchen and then uh, you need to have flexible working hours for employees you need to have proper storage for disinfected items so this is not how it can function anymore if your clean towels were like this in your salons this is not going to be the new normal this is going away your clean towels your disinfected towels need to be in airtight 
labeled cupboards okay and all your soil linens or your trash or your items need to be in closed lid containers with removable and disposable liners okay another question for you guys option a b or c how would you store your dirty linen or your laundry give me your answer in the chat a b or c which option would be preferred to store dirty laundry or soil linen c c c okay c c c awesome you guys get it i like it i like it you are so smart assume that always yes bhagwati yes sarita awesome yeah you guys are getting it i'm glad that you're able to absorb the information so always assume that your laundry and your linen has virus now think how you will store option number c is correct because we always close the lid of our dirty items and laundry yes raji yes sharmista yes oppo f11 you guys are correct all trash should be in closed lid container with removable disposable liner all the soil linen or laundry should also be in closed lid, closed lid container with removable and disposable liner and that's it for the infrastructure that this is what i say for restrooms make sure that you're cleaning everything your sinks bowls toilet bowl toilet bowls and your floor your walls with your spray and wipe method and you are also using antibacterial hand soap and what i have done in salon is i have posted several hand washing signs for my employees to see for clients to see so that social distance is maintained so that everyone knows that they have to wash hands so have those guidelines shampoo bowl always disinfect your bowls hoses spray nozzles and foils and if available wrap the shampoo bowls in plastic so this is this is what i uh, this is what i mean by having alternate occupancy in shampoo bowl so see how we have an alternate occupancy at shampoo bowl and we can maintain a social distance and then we can also put a plastic cover on our chairs so that we can disinfect our chairs assume there is coronavirus on the floor all the towels walls tools fans product equipments and disinfect everything every day okay if you have doubt now i have told you everything about what needs to be trashed what can be disinfected and what needs to be in laundry if you still have doubt this is what i tell all my students when in doubt throw it out because you know you don't really know right it's porous or it's not porous then i just i just throw it out because you are not sure what to do with it after all this knowledge simple so payment system i promote cashless payment prefer to have all these apps and ask your clients to pay you through this rather than taking cash there is no way you can disinfect your dollar or indian rupees it's porous material if you put it in wipe or disinfect it's gone zero don't do that also you can think of installing acrylic barriers i know of few salons who have installed acrylic barriers and they are really cheap single time use you see them in malls all the time and uh, that can be the new payment system then before a client arrives this is what i helped one a friend of mine to do she was really struggling when she was opening a salon and i said okay let's do this for you what we did is we made small kits for her employees so manicure pre sanitized implements could be in one resealable bag or one disposable plastic bag then the facial pre sanitized implements could be in another bag hot wax could be in another bag chemical application and relaxer could be in another bag so basically all the services that you're doing you can keep them in small uh disposable bags or small resealable bags and then each time you're doing that service just take that bag and just go for it that's it you are not really infecting everything and then not everything is out in the open once it goes inside the bag you know that hey i disinfected it and now i just use it and then after using it you will put it in the d for dirty box okay so how should your salon or shop look like after reopening option a or option b write in the chat for me what do you think should the salon or your shop look like after reopening should everything be out like this or should everything be inside like this right 
ऑप्शन नंबर बी यस यस आशा यस अरुंधति यस शिवानी यस कलाई यस रीना यस यू ऑल आर करेक्ट इफ यू हैव हंड्रेड इंप्लीमेंट आउट यू हैव टू डिस इनफेक्ट हंड्रेड थिंग्स इफ यू हैव टेन इंप्लीमेंट आउट यू हैव टू डिस इनफेक्ट टेन थिंग्स द चॉइस इज योर्स ऑप्शन नंबर पी बी इज डेफिनेटली प्रेफरेबल ओके सो ड्यूरिंग द सर्विस वॉट नीड्स टू बी डन एज आई सेड नो डबल डिपिंग use plastic covering on the chairs and suppose for nail tech you can have an acrylic barrier system you can have plastic covering on the chairs use the cd box system c for clean d for dirty use hand sanitizer at all the station use single use facial kits use single use manicure pedicure kits use single use spa kits use uh, anything which is single time use so that you're not really uh throwing everything up and you're not storing everything in the fridge and dispensing it off later after service now when your service is done discard all the single use items disinfect all the tools and equipment how do we disinfect step number 1 remove hair product dirt step number 2 clean soap with uh, clean with soap warm water scrub and gloves step number 3 disinfect with uh, with immersion or spray and wipe method step number 3 uh, again you will wait for the contact time 2 to 20 minutes step number 4 rinse with running water towel dry and store step number and then spray and wipe method spray wait and wipe and clean and disinfect all the hampers that hold soil linens and be sure to use one that can be lined and and closed like i said all your disinfected things should be in closed containers or and after you've used them it should be in closed lid containers with removable and disposable liners okay step number 9 rule number 9 make sure that you know for every item for every service if it can be laundered if it can be disinfected if it can be put into trash staff management tips and tricks educate your staff this there's no supplement for uh, you know all the details what if your staff doesn't know corona virus will not so will not say hey elisha did correctly but her staff did not do correctly so i am so i am not going now corona virus does not look at your skin color does not look at north india south india east west they it does not look at a bank balance it does not look at the country educate your staff period you knowing the information alone is not enough share it with them and what i like to call is certify yourself and your entire professional staff so what lavivo and hair and beauty tour are doing and we are what and this is something that we are doing for the industry we are we are giving covid 19 certification and here it can be your name which tells that you have taken the training but hey will you get the certificate just by doing this class no let me get get back on it in 2 minutes so when we travel in uber ola this is what we see right we see some ratings in our app and then when we sit in the car we see that the driver has their license or they are registered right what does that do to us what does that rating or what does that license do to us that gives us security that hey we can trust this person this person is not going to take me to the wrong destination we trust the rating we trust the license on the dashboard have certificate at every station for every staff so if at station number a ahmed is working ahmed needs to have a certificate right there if station number b rani is working rani needs to have a certificate right there wherever your staff is working they need to have their certificate right there for the clients to see that they have covid 19 certification they know how to disinfect they know what is virus what is germs how things spread okay so this is what i propose have certificate at every station and make sure that the employee that's working on the station only their certificate is hanging there so that the client feels secure just the client just the salon owner having the certificate is not enough because i feel salon owner certificate is right there in the reception who is working is the employees and the staff the staff needs to have the certification done because hey the germs can be transferred from the staff right so have your covid 19 certificate 
give your clients the same reassurance that Uber and Ola gives you. After all, it's not a matter of money, but matter of life and death. Remember one mistake. And I know shops in India, which have been shut down just because one employee was tested COVID-19. The entire RWA was notified. Then their, all their franchisee shops were closed. And this is for one of the grossly outlets that I personally know myself. And it takes so much money and so much paperwork to reopen your establishment. So, uh, well, another suggestion that I'll give you is open at 30 to 50% capacity. Start with 30 to 50% and then you can really alternate schedule for your staff. And then once you're sure that this is the way appointments work, this is the way everything works, then you can scale up but start with 30 to 50%, okay? Because this is all new, this new normal, new appointment management, new before the service, checklist, trash, disinfection, who is doing what? Disinfecting everything. People will take time, okay? So you will, I like to say, educate your staff for about three days. That's what I do. Three days of training before a salon opens. Trust me, it's worth that investment of time. Three days for every service. For example, you are doing a haircut. Now start, set up, break it down. So that's what we do. I would recommend you to do the same thing. So that's it. Okay. Whoever has registered with their email for the class will get a link for the examination. The certificate will also reach in your email after you pass the exam, 90% is the passing rate for the exam. There are 14 questions. So you can have one wrong and that's it. So either you score 13 on 13 on 14 or you score 14 on 14. 90% is the passing rate for the exam. And, and you are like, Alicia, why are you doing that? Why are you being so, so strict, right? The school only says 40%. Why are you doing this, Alicia? Okay. So hey, coronavirus is deadly. One mistake and the salon can be contaminated. One mistake and uh, someone can go to hospital. This is no joke. So we really want to certify people who understand what this disease brings. So we will uh, send you the link for the exam in your email. And these are some of our graduates. Uh, this is the, uh, so we do several programs and you will join after the certification, you will join this group of graduates from the world. This is called Heron Beauty Tour. We do several classes in US, Canada, Romania, Europe, and everywhere. And just join our international band of crazy people. That's what I like to call myself and all the people that I teach. And that's it. So I know you all have significant roles in your organization. I know some of you would be the best person to do the balayage. I know some of you would be the best nail artist. I know some of you are the best makeup artist. I know some of you have millions of dollars in your bank accounts. But remember one thing, individually we are significant, but in front of the industry we are nothing. And that's where this class comes in and that's where my role comes in, is to help everyone. We should also help each other. You learned something from this class today, correct? Share it with at least five people. You don't have to tell them my name. Don't do my marketing. I don't even care on that. But give them this knowledge. Share. Because if, I, if we all think you know, on selfish grounds, this is not going to go forward. Coronavirus started with a very small city which no one knew about. Who knew that? that country had such a small city but now it's everywhere in the world so it takes only one salon to infect that entire city or shut down that entire salon again let's join hands if you like the class give a shout out on the whatsapp facebook or tiktok or ig wherever you are coronavirus as i said started from a small city and is now in the whole world exam link will be sent out in emails certificate will reach your inbox after 10 days Make sure that you check your emails. A lot of people, you don't, you don't know how to check your emails. One thing that I would really ask you to learn. Learn from your kids. Learn from your neighbors. Anyone who is 
on on uh, who does a lot of computers just tell them how do i set up email how do i check email how do i uh, download an attachment and probably how do i send an email so like these three four things very basic learn you guys learned zoom right no one none of you knew how to probably i would i won't say none of you i would say most of you did not know how to use zoom before the shutdown happened but look at it now 291 people are on zoom call for like 2 hours you guys know what zoom is right you guys are quick learners you guys are awesome see all the right answers that you were giving us do that and you can even go ahead and join our facebook group and our whatsapp group and be part of the community and this community is all about helping each other i am not i'm i'm extremely huge on that and that's it question and answers time now and this is where i like to bring my guy all right and this is and this are my uh, like facebook ig and website if you want to check that and this is my email that you can do okay so thank you so much thank you so much awesome nice you guys liked it thanks thanks awesome awesome so thanks alisha happy i took out time to attend your class uh, please let us know if you are if you will be doing english and hindi sessions again or if we can get link for the same spurti uh, the hindi link will be available soon in fact i think it's available i just need to share it and the english is this session i'll probably i'll probably upload this session and give you the link for this thank you so much for asking this again i will post the links for from this session in the whatsapp group and on the uh, facebook group for hidden beauty tool thank you so much thank you so much guys thank you love to listen to you satya says oh, i satya weren't you there in my last class you like <laughs> Okay, thank you, Satya, for coming again. Thank you, dear. Okay, please send Hindi version. Yes, I will send Hindi version. It's the next next date. Richa, next date next date is not really decided as of now. I'm just going to send out the link so that people can see and review it at their own pace. I know I gave a lot of information in two hours, and people are like, "Your if your head is exploding, it's fine." <laughs> okay, if your head is like. Elisha told us so much. It's fine. Trust me, I learned this over a period of years. So um, definitely, I'll share the link with you. Please watch it, and then you can pause, play, pause, play. So next uh, date is not really present, Richa. But again, I will post it on the Facebook group and on the WhatsApp group when I'm doing it. Hindi video. P I yes, I'll send you. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, ma'am. The class was exam. Okay, exam. exam ma'am hindi mein hoga kya so exam will be in hindi kabu no exam will be in english 14 questions multiple choice questions a b c d a b c d is really simple but uh, 90% and exam is really easy you can do it and it's an online exam so you just will get a link click on that link and i think a lot of people have posted their certificates also on facebook and whatsapp that was so cool awesome Thank you so much. Thank you, Alicia, ma'am. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. How can my staff register? So, uh, so for the for the next class, I don't really know when we are doing that. Why don't you do this? Show them the video of this session and then have them do the certification. Super informative exam Hindi me exam is in English. It was an awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I love to see that you all love the class. It means so much to me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unmute you so that you can speak. Hello, Salla, Talla, Kala, Pariyara, Talla. Everyone, you want to? Hi, Pani Napa. Thank you so much, ma'am. Good luck.